Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Wednesday, June 26th, 2 a.m. Mountain Time, 2019. You're looking at Camp Choctaw Peninsula to the left, the end of the Aleutian Islands to the right, and a cacophony of quakes starting at the six magnitude. Let's look at the, the rundown. We had a 6.3 kicking off about 24 hours ago, followed by 6.4 and some minor quakes, which are increasing from 4.6 to 4.8, which means this is a standard scenario of precursors to a major quake. So we could be looking for a 7.5 or greater, 8 magnitude in the next 24 hours in this region. If we get the phi angle shift we need, we need you to keep calm. We have major volcanoes erupting worldwide, including Rancoc, which you can see here blasting through the atmosphere in the lower level up into the stratosphere, which is preventing it from the flattening out here. The stratospheric boundary is just above this eruption, maybe 15,000 feet, causing it to pancake out because there's a layering here. This volcano is trying to get to the stratosphere. When they do get there, it's anyone's guess what will happen. But we want you to keep calm because it is boom time. And you will learn something tonight. Huge storms unleash hail, snow, tornadoes, floods, putting 42 million Americans at risk. And people had strange black caps on. After almost 500 reports of wind damage and hail over the weekend, 42 million Americans were put in the path of a storm Monday night. A front stretch from Texas to the northeast unleashed heavy rain, damaging winds, tornadoes, and flooding. An EF2 tornado with speeds of 125 miles per hour ripped through South Bend, Indiana. Thankfully, no children were inside the Growing Kids Learning Center when the roof was literally ripped off. But authorities say the heavy rains did claim the life of an Oklahoma woman who died after her car was swept into a creek. It was a tweak. Residents in Jackson, Missouri are cleaning up after Sunday storm damaged virtually every neighborhood in the city. Floods also rolled through Missouri. It was misery. Two kids in the town of Monette had to be rescued while they fell into fast-moving water. Lightning from the same system destroyed a home in Spring, Texas. And dangerous lightning strike almost hit fans at an outdoor concert in Kansas. In Houston, the rains nearly cost a man his life. Highway traffic cameras were recording a first responder rescuing him from rising waters. Houston District Fire Chief James Watson said, ultimately, the most important thing is his life. So we were able to get him out of the water. In the mountains of Colorado, the precipitation came down as snow right before July. Ho, ho, ho. Ultimately, 20 inches on the opening day of summer. It was a bummer. Officials say the state snowpack is 40 times normal, also because of heavy spring snow. Now, that has extended the ski season, which is the reason for your pleasing, all the way into summer. Thanks, Al. Get your hole. Jesus, I hate him. He's like annoying. He's getting more annoying. Heavy snowstorms are hitting the state of Colorado. Coming out today. Hey, hey, this isn't even a Can-Am, it's a plow. Holy cow. While the summer heat is finally making its way to Michigan, where there's record temperatures in the southeast and in the upper Midwest, other parts of the nation quite aren't there yet. Yeah, that means Colorado. Winds reaching 50 miles per hour, heavy snow have created hazardous conditions so severe that plow trucks have had to turn around in some areas which means those areas are scary as because they were scared. And we're white screened. Holy sh... And that's tonight's first boom. Let's get to it. What is this? Is this my email open? Why is that open? Oh my God. I didn't want to show you that. Top secret information. Trail Ridge Road opens after snow and ice. It's June 26th, by the way. Closures on the first day of summer. That was the 21st. It was a bummer. We just saw this Rocky Mountain National Park, Colorado, CBS4. Trail Ridge Road reopened on Tuesday after it closed on the first day of summer because of snow and ice. Crews were able to clear the road to visitors. Finally, just today. Colorado welcomes summer with two feet of snow. Ho, ho, ho. 
That doesn't look like summer at all. Ow! What the f are you doing with these pictures, man? I thought it was hot out. Is that like spray foam? I don't... What is that? While people in some parts of the country celebrated the first day of summer with barbecues and trips to the beach and other tweaks, residents of north and north central Colorado had a snowy day. Some people down in the southwest at Oppenheimer Ranch and Three Canyons Permaculture Farm, their crops actually froze. Yeah, we have video. We'll be posting that tomorrow. Now, Grand Lake, Aspen, Steamboat Springs experienced snowstorms on summer solstice with snowfalls totaling nearly two feet in the highest elevation, CBS Denver reported. Snow started falling in the Rocky Mountains the morning of Friday, June 21st, and continued through Sunday. Areas at ground level weren't cold enough, thankfully, to experience the unusual weather, but all crops froze and were completely destroyed. Elevations of 7,000 feet and above, it looked like a winter wonderland, including Steamboat Springs. The Colorado's Yampa Valley accumulated 20 inches of the global warming goodness, right in the beginning of summer. It wasn't a bummer. It was a bummer with cosmic ray flux coming into the Monte Atco and Andouche areas. The following photos show significant flooding. Yeah, they do. Holy sh The depths of flooding in the Monte Albo is visible here where one resident's home being surrounded by floodwaters Tuesday, which was their lose day. Flooding in the area is especially noteworthy considering it occurred just two days after the first year anniversary of the Great Flood of June 2018, when between June 18th and the 22nd, a similar weather event caused tens of millions of dollars of damage to the region, prompting multi-million dollar drainage improvements, which improved nothing. <laughs> Where have I heard that before? Someone's going on vacation, that's for sure. Certainly the flooding improvement people. Who should be in jail? Because you cannot improve flooding on a river unless you're a liar. Major flooding power outages in Harlingen. This is in Texas, which is the nexus of your schmexus. Severe weather along the Texas-Mexico border is not only causing a catastrophe with migrants trying to go over that fake wall, but it's also causing flooding damages and other power outages. Yeah. Plus these dangerous rogue Mexicans with large cantaloupe calves and thousands of pounds of marijuana on their back are looking for water and other products that are in your homes. They want to rape your children and eat your wife. People are being forced out of their homes in some areas partially underwater in Harlingen, not because of the cantaloupe calved cannabis carrying rapist drug dealers, but because of the floodwaters, a community in the Rio Grande Valley. Over 12 inches of rain was also dumped in this area during overnight causing the cantaloupe-calved, drug-dealing, rapist uh, infiltrators from another country to be held at bay. Yes, they were held at bay due to the flooding. Many of them drowned with their children and babies on back. And I'm not even smoking crack. I'm just repeating what the mainstream said. It's all your fault, you fucking bricks. Flash flood watch issued for most of the Rio Grande Valley. That's most of it. The National Weather Service in Brownsville has issued a flash flood warning for most of the Rio Grande Valley through 7 a.m. Wednesday, which is, includes most of it. A flash flood watch means conditions may develop that lead to flash flooding in most of the valley. The affected areas include, include most of the valley listed below here. The National Weather Service also said that it's going to be moist and unstable for most of the area, which will be very uncomfortable if you have jock at your other chafing conditions said Diamond. Now, if we just Google major flooding, we see major flooding in Harlingen. We just covered heavy rains bringing flooding to the weary RGV, wherever the, that is. Three people rescued from cars in Hackensack. Flooding in the Monte Albo and in Douche area. Flash flooding storms hit central U.S. Derby pumps sop and people's shit is flooded. Flash flooding causes flooding in flooded areas of flooded areas in Washington County. Flooding damages two billion and you're flooded in Mississippi regions. New Chesterfield flooded, organizations flooded, flash flooding flooded. Take care of the flooded flutters. Rescue for fourteen in the strip trap flooding. Photos of flooding and it's just flooding and flooding and flooding. Boom!
right out your flooded ass of cosmic ray catastrophe. Now, the mainstream wants you to believe that carbon dioxide are at all record highs and you need to pay your taxes. And here's what you need to know. Pay your taxes so that we can continue to pollute the planet with radiation, chemicals, and other shit while you pay taxes for plant food, you pricks. Gobble it up. They got your dime on. Now, the truth is that the worsening cosmic ray situation has your panties in a bunch. This is coming from Dr. Tony Phillips. Cosmic rays are bad and they're getting worse. Yeah. That's the conclusion of a new paper, which isn't so new if you knew what I knew. If you knew that I knew what you knew, hey, is it KP0? This paper came out a while ago. In fact, February 22nd, 2018. That's a year and a few months. Update on the worsening particle radiation environment observed at Crater and implications for future human deep space exploration. Do you remember a year ago when we were saying that going to Mars is bullshit? Well, it still is. It's only more dangerous. And going to the moon and other places outside the uh, Earth's atmosphere is very dangerous. If you don't have a planet that is shielding you from the sun and the outer universe, which would have to be a three-dimensional planet, which means you'd have to be inside of it, you're fluxed. Yeah. Cosmic radiation at an all-time high. Not only that, chemtrail hysteria at an all-time high for the same reason. Cloud nucleation. Cosmic rays on Earth since 1964 here in this graph showing we're at a cosmic ray maximum. We're nearing a space age high. No, we're not. We beat it. High heart life. Get with the program. We've exceeded the human cosmic ray maximum for the last 10,000 years. That is a scary situation. And we're going to talk about some other scarier situations in a moment. And uh, some other frauds and some other facts. The fact is that cosmic rays cause increased lightning and hail which we predicted over a year ago. And we said by this time or in six months from now, we'd be seeing seven inch hail. This hailstone isn't just a handful. It is so big. It tied a state record in Arkansas. It's Are you dabbing? It's across and larger than your average grapefruit. Storms rolled through Western Arkansas on Wednesday, dropping what I can only describe as some really big astronomical hail. It was large enough to break some windshields. So what does it take to whip up a hailstone larger than a grapefruit? Well, some really powerful thunderstorm updrafts. Now, hail forms when updrafts lift tiny water droplets high into the sky where they freeze. The stronger the updraft, the longer the hail can linger. And as more water droplets freeze on contact, the larger it grows. Eventually, the hailstone gets too heavy for the updraft and it falls. Yeah, then you're fluxed as it hits your head and kills your children and breaks your windows. Softball size hail. I'm sick of this lady. Shut up. Now, what they're claiming is 103 mile per hour winds or greater had to be the updraft in this severe thunderstorm. A severe thunderstorm Wednesday evening dumped giant hailstones on an Arkansas town, all breaking records as predicted. The hail was five inches in diameter. According to this, it's showing five and a half inches, and it had been melted at the time. So, hello. This tied the state record for the largest documented hailstone ever. And windshields were smashed. One calf was killed as a result of this hail. It's just the beginning. It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And you know it's getting bigger? The water in the San Juan. Here is how I want you to read this graph. If you're with me and you know that Colorado just experienced a winter storm during the 23rd and the 24th, you're going to see the video tomorrow that I upload about the freeze that happened on the 23rd and the 24th. And what happens is it gets cold in the mountains. The melt stops. It gets locked up there. But it got warm tonight and last night, and it's starting to flow. And we plan on getting the river on Thursday when it hits peak level at 2,000. We want to be in there at 2,000, which was my plan Thursday and my calculation 10 days ago that it would be there. And you see where it's getting perfectly at 2000 for our trip in two days? I must know what I'm talking about. Hey, Diamond knows what he's talking about. He must be a hydrologist or a geologist. Middle Point, Australia records its coldest ever temperature, which we re 
uh, predicted a year ago. Icicles form in Alice Springs. It's true. The Antarctic blast currently gripping the Australian continent is continuing to take names, kick ass, with the latest GFS runs revealing there is yet more anomalous cold to come in early July, which is weeks from now. Hobart, the capital of Australia's island of the state of Tasmania, registered its coldest morning since 2013 on June 24th. Third coldest in the past two decades. Darwin Airport, which is used to overnight temperatures north of 20 C this time of year, just experienced 12.5 C. Can you believe that? The region's lowest recorded temperature in quite a while. While Middle Point, west of Darwin and east of Humpty Doo, has just suffered its coldest night ever, bodying them out at nipple hardening 4.8 C. Can you believe that? That's a bummer. It was so cold in Alice Springs, located in Australia's Northern Territory, where it never freezes, that icicles formed on trees and other things. There it is. Proof that Al Gore was right. And you know all those other global warming alarmists that told you that Greenland was melting catastrophically during this one week period right here? Hey, everything's a cycle and they didn't even get it. It just broke all time record freezing and is now in mass gain in the middle of summer, which almost never happens. Who is reporting on that? Mass gain June 25th and 26th. No one! Because they're fucking frauds. They only report on what they need to talk about. Title column, Failure Stresses in the Northern Andean in Intermediate Depth Seismic Cluster. Implications for a possible correlation between tides and seismicity. You can't predict earthquakes? That's what they say. It seems like day after day we can predict them better and better. Who's right? Who's wrong? You make the call. Anyone's guess. But the seismic uptick we've seen in the last few days. Boom! 6.2 in Panama. Aciero de Garish. There'll be loss of lives here. And we still have some major activity. 4.1 in Bandan, Oregon. On the Cascade Rupture Zone. So what am I saying? What's going on? Do you care? Does it matter? Well, it does. And I'll tell you why. Because we've been warning about the seismic uptick for months now. Since spring kicked off. So what we're seeing with this major uptick in seismicity is the flexure point of the solar minimum. So what you're experiencing is the, the minimum of cycle 24. It's happening now. The zero point is now. Will we get an eight magnitude? Will we get more sevens in the next week? You're living the solar minimum of cycle 24. The absolute bottom of the minimum. We're about to turn up, which gives us six more weeks of extreme minimum through next winter. So we're not going to really uptick into cycle 25 until 2020. It's my best guess, which I predicted over a year ago, and it's coming true now. Seismic activity increasing during that flexure point of the solar polar reversal as we go into the new cycle. It's happening now. Hopefully, New Madrid won't fault on this cycle. Hopefully. The Kamchatka is looking very dangerous. Rancoc also. Incredible image of the eruption column. We showed you that. Erupting to over 40,000, 43,000 feet. During the peak phase of activity noon of the 22nd of June. Very significant. <coughs> Worldwide Volcano News Update. Popo, Tucono, Reventador, Sangay, Sabancaya, Ulawan. Sangay blown to 19,000 feet. We also have emissions 25,000 feet on Sabancaya, Popo, with volcanic ash emissions. Ulawan. 
increased seismic activity to Kono puffing, nothing significant, but we do have an uptick, and I would really be worried about the Aleutians. Now, Bill Cosby appeals his sex assault conviction. I moved from Montgomery County just six years ago into the beautiful part of the country where I live now in southwest Colorado. But Bill Cosby has the balls to say today, this is a beautiful day and it is delicious, appealing his sexual assault where he has raped and molested dozens of women through his... Look at this man. Look at this is the this is the eyes of a guilty man. This is look at my eyes. Look at his eyes. So this guilty old prick is st still trying to get away with more nonsense. I love Jello pudding pops, by the way, but this scumbag he needs to pay. Bye bye, Bill. I don't care if you are Cosby or whatever the fuck you were. Hmm. Bill Cosby can suck it. University of Iowa receives NASA grant for satellites. Iowa City, Iowa, coming from the Associated Press, a University of Iowa team has won $115 million grant to develop satellites for studying a system of radiation caused by the sun, which some call space weather. Wow. They've done this down so retarded that you don't even want to learn about it. Now, but... Space weather may be the most important thing to the rest of your being live. The start of lightning is explained in this paper, which I will share below in the links. Hail and cosmic particles, which are not sharticles. These are increasing and you're living the cosmic ray maximum ever recorded in human history since they started erasing history. The first time researchers demonstrate how lightning has started ever in this paper. A combination of hail and high energy particles from space originating from exploding stars and grand solar minimums. A cosmic ray produces a shower of electrons when these reach the tip of large hailstones where electric fields are amplified, lightning starts. It's just not lighting farts, which is fun to do if you bend over and you have a lighter. But... The Phoenix Aurora spreads its wings over an abandoned military power station in Russia. Not only that, just months ago, we showed you a dragon Aurora. Now, ancient man depicted these visions in uh, glyphs, petroglyphs, hieroglyphs, and other glyphs. Glyph simply is the ancient word for picture in case you're not following us. But here you can clearly see the flight of the phoenix, the morning dove. Holy! If I saw that and I was, a, I would see God. And I would name him Todd. But we did just see a dragon in the same region just months ago. The display of fireworks. Now, do you remember the mainstream was claiming that we would never see Aurora? It's the end of Aurora, global warming, blippity bloppity blue. And in just the last year and a half, we've seen the discovery of a new Aurora called Steve, which is a blue laser beam from the surface to the space. And we've seen the dragon and now the phoenix all up in the Aurora belt. A year after the mainstream claimed that we would never see any more auroras any anymore. It's all over. And now, are you understanding how inept the public is when it comes to actually understanding science? Totally inept. But what is interesting is that in the mainstream scientific publications, we're seeing more and more information about grand solar minimus. We're seeing more and more information about the heartbeat of the sun. We're seeing more and more information about everything we've been screaming about for years. And they're picking it up, what we've already put down. In fact, it almost seems like they're adding an introduction to a unfolding of some information. Now, the Spora Minimum was the deepest ever recorded in recent human history, and a new paper just came out about it. And they say in this paper that the sun is responsible 
for the cooling. Yep, not you. The sun. I can't even make this up. It's like uh, we live in an oxymoronic world of total nonsense. Welcome to your new future. It's a boom future. One in which you're completely misinformed. Now, the acceleration of condensational growth of water droplets in an external electric field proves that increased cosmic rays will increase cloud nucleation, lightning, hailstones, and other shit that will cure ass and collapse the markets and fry the grid. This is just a piece of the puzzle. A piece. <clears throat> and what it basically says is that It's over, Johnny. <coughs> the condensation growth of spherical water micro droplets is studied in a lab set up. And with a mathematical model, in the experiment, droplet clusters are kept in a freely levitated state with an upward oriented flow of water vapor. In the presence of an electrostatic field of 1.5 times 10 to the fifth volts per meter, droplet growth is accelerated by a factor 1.5 to 2 in comparison to constant blah, 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 blue. In, in conclusion, now according to this paper, the droplet cluster technology is an effective tool for studying condensation. Now what does that mean to the layman? It means that the chemtrails that you're seeing are condensation trails due to increased electrical activity in our ionosphere, atmosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere, and every other sphere, the sphere of the Earth. Condensation growth in an electric field occurs anisotropically, which means as you increase it, clouds increase. Processes occurring in clouds and fogs, including condensation, will increase with increased electrical activity. As we see auroras increase, when the mainstream said they would be non-existent, so do the clouds increase, which increase the albedo effect, cooling of the earth, and hysteria amongst chemtrailers. Illinois becomes the 11th state to allow recreational marijuana. Boom! We love that because we smoke it. And it cures cancer. And that fat guy's happy as a prick because he probably has some money invested in the grow. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. Why wouldn't you, Hubble Space Telescope, spot, spot soccer ball moms in space? Did I just say that? Holy sh... And I just closed that because it's that irrelevant. <clears throat> Let's get to it. The Hubble Space Telescope has identified soccer ball-shaped molecules amid the gas and dust that fills the space beyond our solar system and between our other systems. Th does it say that? And it's buckyballs, mother... Yeah. We're talking shungite shit here. Electrically charged C60 molecules in which 60 carbon atoms are arranged in a hollow sphere that is, resembles a soccer ball called a buckyball was found in the Hubble Space Telescope and the interstellar medium between star systems. So, if you were wondering the significance and the connection between shungite and bees, shungite and lecon, shungite and diamond saying shungite in the water, shungite water and things that go clingity clangity clue, it's in space, right in your face, right, right over there. See that? That's a buckyball, prick. And you need to drink it. We sell them in the store. Oppenheimer Ranch prepared in the store down below. Now the buckyballs to few ISM can be considered the starting point for the chemical process that ultimately gives rise to planets and life. And blah, blah, blah. Now, they can also be found in rocks and minerals and appear in soot creation from high combustion. Not only that, they're in shungite. And you should drink it. Because it cures cancer and makes people feel good. And we're probably demonetized. One week until the great South American total solar eclipse. If you're watching us from the Southern Hemisphere, then you probably don't even know what I'm talking about. But hey, we love you. The countdown July 2nd has begun. 
on Tuesday, July 2nd, a lot of ocean and a few tiny bits of land will lie under the moon, black and sun eclipse. And it will be awesome. Especially if you do a dab. Let's do the it clear dab. sky and high. Dabbing. Dabbing now. Do it now. The clear sky and high altitude of the Atacama Desert in Chile make it the perfect place to carry out astronomical observations. The ESO observatories lie in this remote mountain desert, making spectacular observations during the night. But on the 2nd of July 2019, one of these observatories, the La Silla Observatory, will be enveloped in darkness during the day a total solar eclipse will occur. A total solar eclipse is one of the most beautiful spectacles of nature. The impact of these rare events is so dramatic that many earlier societies believed that they were bad omens. Today, solar eclipses are accurately predicted long in advance. They're exciting to watch and they provide us with a way to observe dim parts of the sun. During a solar eclipse, the moon moves between the earth and the sun, covering part of the solar disk in the sky this cannot happen every month because of a tilt in the Moon's orbit. In case of a total solar eclipse, which occurs on Earth on average once per 14 months, the entire solar disk is covered and the Moon casts a shadow on a narrow part of the Earth, the path of totality. In 2019, the path of totality is only about 200 kilometers wide but about 11,000 kilometers long. It is vital to use appropriate and effective eye protection when watching an eclipse. As the eclipse progresses, when over 95% of the sun is blocked by the moon, the landscape starts to darken and grow silent. In the sky, bright planets and even stars, otherwise swamped by sunshine, pop out from the dark background. Just a few seconds before the sun is totally eclipsed, its upper atmosphere, the solar corona, finally appears. In the same moment, it looks like a diamond ring in the sky. Then the last pearls of sunlight, the Bailey's beads, disappear and the total eclipse begins. The corona's spectacular tendrils of plasma visibly stream from the sun during the eclipse. These strands are about 10 million times dimmer than sunlight, so only when the sun is completely hidden by the moon do they become visible. At La Silla, totality will last 1 minute and 48 seconds, and the sun will be low over the horizon. When the sun is fully covered, the sky becomes dark blue except for dusky colors lacing the horizon. Planets and stars pop out for the minutes of darkness. During the La Silla eclipse, planets Venus and Mercury and bright stars including Sirius, Procyon, Rigel and Betelgeuse will be visible. ESO will open the La Silla observatory to the public on the day of the solar eclipse. Visitors will, weather permitting, be able to view the solar eclipse while standing among ESO's unique fleet of telescopes, 2,400 meters above sea level. And not just that, during all the day of the eclipse, public visitors and school groups will be able to tour the La Silla telescopes and attend talks and workshops. 
one could wait for another total solar eclipse over the La Silla Observatory, but the next one won't take place until the 28th of August, 2231. For the lucky few, it will be a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Yes, it will. Not only that, the grid will already be down before that happens, so good luck. Will you be there? Doubt it. Uh. Holy macaroni. Now on Tuesday, July 2nd, a lot of ocean, a few tiny bits of land will be under a moon, black and sun, solar eclipse, and you just watch the video. We're going to close it. We're going to close out this update with 11 more taps. <laughs> Remember that soda? Yeah, it wasn't good for you. Oscillations of the baseline of solar magnetic field and solar irradiance on a millennial time scale. The new paper from Zarkova is out. Published 24th, June, 2019. We have it here live. And I'm about to do one of the most epic scientific dissections of this paper. And I'm going to be putting it up on Magnetic Reversal News and Oppenheimer Ranch in the next 24 hours. Why? Because it's news you need to know. Not only that, it's important that the public is explain this in layman's terms to someone that is a graduate student teacher so that I can teach as if you were an undergraduate the basics of what Zarkova, the heartbeat of the sun, and the way that they use um, spectral analysis to actually look at the cyclicity using computer analysis. Now, what they do is they take a huge subset of numbers, which we've been gathering for decades, and they run it through systems which can pick out, through spectral analysis, cycles that we can't see on our own. And they're very highly correct. And I'm talking 97% probability in many of these statistical analysis. So in this particular analysis here, they, they get their funding because they go along with the global warming narrative. Now, I'm just going to give you a little tippy touch of what I'm talking about here. So here they show you the actual heartbeat of the sun due to their analysis earlier from almost a decade ago. And they overlay it with more modern analysis of global warming right here. So they allow for global warming in here. They say, look, uh, global warming is going to occur. Now their official analysis is that global warming is occurring as a natural cycle and global warming will continue to occur until 2600. 2600. Yeah, that's, we're all dead. It's, uh, by the way, if you didn't know, 2019. So that's 500, that's a lot of time. So by 2600, the temperature on Earth will actually rise 1.5 degrees. See? <whistles> now, according to the IPCC, we were going to raise that much last year, which is still untrue because every single thing they ever predicted is untrue. Now, Zarkova is being way more realistic and saying the natural cycle of variability and then by 2600 will raise the temperature 0. 0.5 degrees. But what's going to happen in the next two or three decades is epically more important. Yeah. Because the same thing happened during the Maunder Minimum. And guess what that was called? It was called the Mini Ice Age, which means it wasn't warm and Al Gore was still in his hole. Appalling conditions in immigrant child centers akin to torture facilities, doctor says. This is the world you're living in. You're being taxed for carbon dioxide, which is plant food. There are people being murdered on borders because they're migrating because of poor conditions. And you're about to live in the most poor conditions you've ever imagined. So if you think you're living the good life and you're all set, you're near a major city, good luck with that. You're just an idiot waiting to be eaten. <laughs> now, let's talk about some smart people and some ideas. What you're looking at is a defunct Christian camp. And it's nearby here in the woods, in the, one of the most strategically located areas on a dead-end road, bordered by national parks. 
this particular lodge picture you're looking at houses 30 people and has 28 bathrooms. I think there's 30 people out there with $100,000 that would buy into that lodge as a place they could live for the rest of their life. Not only that, there are eight other houses on this parcel, which is gigantic. and includes the top of this mountain right there. Dead end road, in the national forest, completely secured. Not only that, it is luxury and it can easily house a hundred people or more. There's bunk houses, fully equipped kitchen, which comes with the project, studio, game room. Do you want to live here? There's even a store where I could sell Oppenheimer Ranch Project gear and Leak Project gear. There's bunks, bunk houses, 27 bathrooms, stellar views, decks, permaculture. There's the church. Now this church area <coughs> very well meet, may be the organic church of infinite abundance. Where Diamond and Rex Bear come here at the podium, which is non-existent, and we give our Sunday sermon. And there are people on the mezzanine doing dabs. It's glorious. We light fires. We camp. There's the Nibiru fire circle. That looks amazing. Another bathroom. Now, there are seven other homes on the site. So if you're interested in getting involved in the project, you could actually buy in and buy a home for your family. Do you have 250K? 300K? Maybe you want the mansion suite. How about the 3,500 square foot awesome investor home here? I'll give you that for 500K. There's another house, plus five acres. Do you have 400K for that one? You're in. I'll give you this house for 200,000. Now, what each and every individual in this brand, brand new facility that has been established, <coughs> we have endless business models. Look at these homes, multiple houses. And those that are in, involved will be part owners in the entire project. Not only that, we're going to be running a full media organization out of this. Uh, we're going to be teaching permaculture. We're going to be teaching alternative energy. We're going to be teaching alternative construction. We're going to be teaching standard construction. We're going to be teaching uh, small city management. We're going to be teaching sustainability, self-reliance business practices, business models. We're going to give you business opportunities. We're going to give you ideas on how to do this yourself. All on the, on the edge of the San Juan National Forest. Look at this. Two of the edges of the entire property are bounded by one million more acres. So the actual lot is like a million acres. Not only that, it is exactly 42 acres which is a sacred number. I mean, it goes through levels and levels. These 42 acres are bound by the 42 commandments of Mott. And it's part of the business model. So if you want in and you're free of sin, in order to understand what we say here, you have to understand the 42 commandments of Mott. Because these are the rules of the organic church of infinite abundance. And if you want in, you need to know the rules. Take number two, for instance. I have not mistreated people. If you want to stay there, rule number two applies. Rule number nine. I did not make anybody cry. 
I hope not, because if you did, you're out. <laughs> I did not cheat on ground. There will be no cheating because we have pool tables. If you're interested in being an investor, Oppenheimer Ranch at gmail.com. Now let's talk about more charlatans and more facts. I'm sure many of you have heard that Greenland is melting. This has been a talking point for days. And the reason it came up was because of this little drop down right here. The only drop down below mass loss in a year. And all the alarmists were like, oh my God, oh my God, look at that. And guess what happened two weeks later? Record gains. And the first time in five years where in the middle of summer, we're above mass loss. I hear crickets because facts are a bitch. This thing is badass. Buy it, top knot. Do it now. And those of you that think that crop circles are from aliens, I have some news for you. They're not. They're from humans. And the most recent crop circle that people think are a plasma discharge, hey, it's a spider with a bunch of circles, by the way. And do you see these really white trails here from humans that walked here? Yeah. So they go in the middle and they set a post and they all walk around in a circle and fold it down. Here and here and here and here. And they all come up on a windrow into here. And Anyway. I digress. I hate to break the news to you again and again that most of the shit that you think is real is fake. If there were aliens, they would be m levels more advanced than we are. They would not abduct people in broad daylight, rape them in their spaceship, and return them to tell their story. What that is, is a traumatic experience of a human that was raped as a child. And then they watch some stupid show and then they think there was an alien. But it was Uncle Jim. We're here to bring you the facts. Uncle Jim is not an alien. Any advanced race would be able to abduct us, take our DNA, and put us back on Earth without actually us remembering. Remember, they're advanced. And the stories that we create are total bullshit created by retarded humans and an idiocracy created by our society, which is about to crumble, thankfully, due to the sun, which controls everything. If you don't understand where we're coming from yet, I'm going to be getting very crystal clear in the months to come. So crystal that if you don't understand what I'm saying, then you shouldn't be watching the show. Check out our preparedness store. Become the next Patreon. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. If you want to live at the Organic Church of Infinite Abundance, email me. We are manifesting that now. It will be a new media center for truth. It will be the seventh competitor. The other six pricks, multinational corporations, will not compete. We will not take any corporate money. We will create our own money from food that we grow with your help. Be safe. We love you. Are you with us? Are you farming? <laughs>